for a way that I minimize corruption. Because many people are jobless <coughs> because of this corruption. Unapata mtu ali graduate kitambo gani? At mpaka sayi unapata mtu pengine ameenda ame out of the stress amesoma yake yote mtu amemaliza na first class but hajapata kazi mm. due to corruption yenye iko kwa hii Kenya so mimi naweza fight corruption kabisa hauja kula fair a a fair si gai kula hey what's up guys so uh, basically it has been it's almost a month since i left uh, russia you know so when you travel from russia and you live now in kenya the things look different you understand so i arrived here it life was so really cool and uh, i remember the first day when i arrived i was just when i just landed then i saw rain it was raining you know like it was just it was just raining something something cool that you wish that you could see I haven't seen this for the past six months and every all the environments are just green everything and another thing i saw like uh, you know i used to see things in like going in order sometimes not uh, like uh, you leave you see snow everywhere but when i came back home i saw the red soil the black soil the everywhere trees are, grow, are growing and the only language people speak is Swahili and English no anything like Russian and uh, and also like it was nice experience for me because uh, I can say that uh, I really miss this kind of environment where you feel safe like it's uh, easier for you to start a conversation without thinking what am I going to say you understand so when you live in Russia is like um, you have to think about some what you are going to say in in Russian language what am I going to say what am I going to tell people like sometimes you find yourself you are stuck in because you're still thinking of what am I gonna tell people? You understand? But when I came, it was so so amazing. One thing, one thing that I just found out for direct from the airport was that you have to begin. That's the thing, you know. I really miss this kind of this part of life because we don't begin. In Russia you don't begin because you go to the shop, you find the price tagged, everything, you pay the way it is. If you don't want, you don't buy. But you order for a taxi, you don't buy gain. You understand? Everything is calculated from the office, head office. Like you're riding a taxi, you're taking Uber. Uber calculates everything. But at some points, you also find some people trying to buy gain with you. You understand? So, and also the exaggeration of things so i was at the airport and uh i was i wanted to take the taxi so you you know you get taxi standby taxi so this is why i always tell people don't take a standby taxi those people they always exploit you they will exploit you so i was like what am i gonna do so i wanted to surprise my sister just i just wanted to go home and meet her immediately pop you know so I couldn't do that. So I had to break everything. I had to break the silence by just calling her because that the people living in Nairobi and they know how the life is really in Nairobi. So one thing is you have to bargain. If you can't bargain, then call. Uh, they have another application. They call Bolt. That's the taxi you can use from the airport. So if you get to Kenya, buy a SIM card, download Bolt. After that, call a taxi. You it will be it's cheaper compared to compared to the standby taxi so I paid 1000 for a taxi to a place where I was going so before that they told me that you have to pay 3000 and they say and they then these are exaggerated things they said that place where you're going to is even far and it's so flooded and the traffic is so is so bad so that you can't even get to that place you know 
then there's something in Kenya they will ask you they will always want you to tag the price before they tag there so they say uko nangapi so that phrase uko nangapi that phrase really hit in my head so i was thinking okay you don't know what someone wants and they ask you what you can offer you understand so i asked myself what kind of business are these, these people going to do here so it was kind of an amazing thing you understand so you this yeah like you just get home and you feel at home immediately this phrase always translates to how much do you have or how much can you afford you understand so for someone to give you that they must have given you another price but in kenya they give you ask you how much you can offer because they know you will pay more and if you tell them like i have a thousand uh, kenya shillings they say okay give us three thousand so they will quote from your point of view you understand so in kenya learn to bargain that's the only thing people bargain it's all about bargaining you do, if you don't bargain you won't survive so that one was one experience then i went back i went home and i met my um, i met my sister's family it was really amazing then i had to eat some fish you know now i came to real life like eating real fish ugali uh, uh, omena and you feel how the life is you understand because I don't know what I used to eat. Generally, I don't know things that I really used to eat because if I cook them here, no one will eat them. So I tried. So imagine I always eat cheese, uh, macaroni and cheese. You know, that something, something like that. So that thing is not kind of, uh, is not kind of uh, tasty. Most people think that that's not a food. In Kenya, that's not a food. How are you gonna eat that? So I eat that. I eat spaghetti and uh, I eat chicken. So one thing that I hate and I don't want to eat again in Kenya is chicken. Because one thing is I ate, I ate three, a four weeks old chicken or uh, eight months or uh, eight weeks old chicken. You know, the bro uh, the bro uh, the broilers. You know, they're really cheap and. And their meat it cooks very fast. So with that experience, I say, wow, I don't want to eat chicken anymore. So I'm eating a lot of fish, vegetables. And apart from that, I'm enjoying the weather. The weather is so amazing in Kenya, man. I'm telling you, this thing is so amazing. And you know to that the common means of transport in Kenya is motorbike. So you better use motorbike because buses they always come late and we have only have long distance buses so if you are in within the city just within the city depends if you are in nairobi use buses but if you are in a small city in the villages they use motorbikes so this one has made the transport system uh, the tra transportation easier and easily accessible and very fast you understand so just find two three guys that will be your will, will be your your operators and then your customers so you're gonna use them and another thing you can't forget means tropical tropical means this is one of the more amazing thing in kenya so ensure that you buy this and enjoy them this is really nice mm. so things has really been so interesting and really cool understand and um, mm, one thing is that um, another thing is a stereotype you you live in Kenya you live here everyone thinks that you have a dollar in Russia we don't have a dollar we have rubles and so everyone wants you to get a ruble from you you know everyone so what's your expectation if you see me do you see me as a as money or you see me as a living thing so that's someone some that's something people always have in mind so i can say that uh it's really bad life is really good in kenya because uh 
I really feel at home. That's the main thing. Yeah, that's the main thing. One thing motivates is the environment. In Russia, it's only green in summer. At this moment, it's starting to get green and greener. Yeah, so. So, that's what I can tell you. And, so, you know, I used to have um, unlimited internet. So, one big problem, another one big problem, if you live in small cities, it's internet. You know, we have internet at homes. So, we have home internet. But, if you want to travel from one place to another, then you have to spend a lot on internet. So, uh, they don't have an, an unlimited internet the way it's uh, I, uh, I was used to you know just subscribe monthly and that's the end of it but at this particular point you can't have it all so you can't have it all you have to you have to spend on the internet so um, the first day I was like I bought internet 1,000 rubles, you know, that's no 1,000 Ken shillings. That's around uh, That's around 13. That's around That's around how much how much That's around uh, I don't know uh, That's around hundred hundred eighty dollars. No, no, no eight dollars. So you buy eight dollars. That's about five GB At eight dollars. That's crazy. You understand? You don't even buy such kind of internet anywhere. So in Kenya, the, the Kenya in Kenya they are exploiting people. The uh, the operators are exploiting people because for internet and whatever. And uh, and apart from that, another challenge I faced is uh, like uh, we have something called time. You understand? So you ex will experience this because. Uh, Time in Africa is not something serious. People don't take this thing serious, you understand? We have to meet at 11. That's time, okay, you are there. You call someone, okay, I will come in 30 minutes. You wait 30 minutes, one hour has gone. Someone comes after one hour, 30 minutes. That's not serious. So time management in Africa is the one of the most, is the worst because, um, People don't take time serious. They don't know that you have other things to do and these things to do. They come even late. They still see people like I was to attend another meet, uh, 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 gathering, and the gathering was supposed to start at eleven. So, getting there at eleven, I had to wait two hours, just sitting there. Kids entertain uh, like kids are entertaining you, and uh, was like you have to wait for two hours. And uh, and uh, and after that, the meeting started after two hours. Then yet, then it will take a long time before it finishes. So, you find that you up, you had a plan, a better plan to spend your day, but you waste your all time in one thing because they start. The people are coming. People are so slow, sluggish. Like you wanna, they wanna do this at the same time. They wanna do this. So. Time is one of the most dangerous, uh, something that is being mismanaged after money, you know, after government's money, you understand? So, <clears throat> so that was something that I really felt bad because I don't like people wasting my time. That's one thing. If I wait for you, you don't come, then I have to go my ways. But people find that one something normal. I told my friend, they told me, man, that thing is normal. Mm -hmm. But for me, you're wasting my time because I have other things to do. People different. So time, that one. But that's, that's if you're coming back to Kenya, you just know that you have to get used to that. But I promise that I'll never waste someone's time. So if I had to meet with you, then you have to meet in time. If you come late, I just cancel. That's that's the thing. You know, even if you want to help me, but if you want to help me, you have to come early because you are ready to help. But if you want to come late, then that's not something you have to appreciate. You understand? So, <clears throat> so I basically say that that's the main thing in Africa we have in Africa. 
someone keep you waiting why should you be waiting for that so uh, apart from food apart from weather people the language the smile you get from people and uh, another thing I experience is you know um, there's so many broke women around here and uh, most of them they really want to the main thing they want is they want to offer they want to be close to you so that you just they just get what you want you understand so women tend to be so smart in that they will capture you so once they capture you then you have to be there like hey I need these give me these give me that so I found that one's also abnormal abnormal because someone doesn't want you but they want money from you that's the shitty thing you understand so that's something something crazy you understand so um so if you're preparing to come to kenya then just come and enjoy this kind of environment you know so i want to say that uh, living in kenya the moment is just, is amazing you understand i've when i've gone to different places and uh, uh like so the hospitality i got in these places and how people reacted to you some tend to be arrogant but it's part of life not all people will treat you the same and also if i compare this uh, life now in kenya and life back in russia i think uh, uh, life in russia seems to be easier more so on food now at this at this point most food products has gone up at this particular point you understand so life tends to be so tough but it's everywhere so life go has gone up so thinking like i used to buy fish cheaply but nowadays cheap uh, fish and meat are really expensive things that you need to spend a lot of money on so like uh, when i left like if you spend 500 500 kenya shillings that was enough you can spend a day for you but nowadays you must have a thousand kenya shillings to feel like you have something to eat for breakfast lunch and dinner it's not even enough you understand so the cost of living has gone up at, the, at this particular moment and uh, and but but people can afford to smile you understand because I just know it's just natural and also I'm um, used to come back and enjoy the greetings people are greeting you like someone just greeting you from nowhere hey jumbo mambo so that kind of feelings makes you to feel like yeah I'm home you know they say it makes you feel like you meet someone they start someone has a conversation you know I was used to starting a conversation but now i'm here in kenya i just sit and someone starts a conversation that's really something cool you understand so you don't put much effort in, into conversations like this so this really feels good you understand so uh if anyone tends to feel home then you really feel like you feel you feel like uh, you are not you are part of a society you understand people can listen to you and listen to what you want to say and that's the pride that's the something i really feel good about so you guys i'm really really happy to be in kenya after a long time and uh, it's my pleasure to be here again so thank you for watching and i hope that i will give you more things that do how to keep up with uh keeping up with kenyans you understand so watch my next video keeping up with kenyans so how do you keep up with kenyans that's the main question so see that one in my next video you understand so stay blessed and thank you